Hello guys, um, it's B here with Neo. Neo, come here. Right, sit down. Oh, lay down. There we are. Here we are, and uh, sorry guys, I've not made a video for a while, but um, finally got to a point where Neo needs some serious tripping because he's been shedding loads. I've seen loads of hair laying around the house, so it's been time to do it. I've got um, a couple of new tools to show you um, what we're going to do. I've stripped one side on him already um, and we're just going to do the other side. And today I've got a bunch of tools here. Uh, dirty brush because he's not been bathed yet. Um, we've got a couple of stones, uh, stripping stones, black one and the white one. Now the white one is very good, it's by Designer Dog, available in UK, because they don't crumble and they don't leave dust. Uh, this black one uh, crumbles a lot and leaves a lot of dust in the, in the dog. It's also a lot bigger, so I'm not too keen because of my small hands, they don't fit very well although this one's softer, um, this one is quite harsh and although it grips really well, um, I find it digs into my hand so I don't like working with it much. I can do a bit but after a while it really starts hurting my hand. And then we've got our uh, superb Andy's fine tooth de-shedding rake which is brilliant to debulk so this should be the number one tool you will start with taking the dead coat out. And then we've got, I've also ordered this Chris Christensen stripping stone with a handle. It's a very fine, smooth, light stone. Uh, I don't find it grippy at all. I think it's really rubbish. Don't waste your money. Um, and then we've got this one, uh, Showtech stripping stone um they're about 25 pound in uk from um i can't remember where i've got it from i think christie's um and they have very good grippy stone and because of the handle it really fits my little hands really well and we basically use it with a thumb against the stone and you got the fine one for detailed work um and that works wonders that's mainly what I'm going to strip him with. Um, you'll see in a minute. <clears throat> it goes super quick. I've, I've done one of his whole sides in about 30, 40 minutes. Um, and uh, then we also have uh, our Ronca Magna Carda, which is a very good fine tooth um, knife. Uh, I use them for raking the coat out. Um, you'll see a little bit and then we've got also our Onco fine uh, stripping knife um, it's also very good for raking the coat out so uh, I'm gonna stand him up um, this. here we go we'll just pop them here right now we're gonna stand up now boy come on um, I'm going to turn him, so uh, we've done that side, um, unfortunately the light is not very good here so you don't see very much, I will attach some pictures, so we're going to work on this side on Neo, um, you might be able to see here all of this dead fluffy, you can tell how all of that has to come out. Um, it looks pretty dreadful and it's really asking to come out. I don't know if you'll show me a turn. Turn. Good boy. Um, this side's been done um, and it lays a lot smoother. Um, not the best. The pictures will show off better once it's bathed and dried as well. So, near turn. Turn that side. Good boy. So, we're going to be here. And we'll do some side. I'll divide the dog into sections, a thigh, a sock, a shoulder. Then we do the side and then we clear up a bit of neck and, and up there. So um, first I'll uh, 
use, I'm just going to pick him up so he doesn't spin around too much. There we go. So we've got him here. So first we will start with a undefined tooth, see what comes out. Um, just to debulk, the more we rake out, and keep raking until it keeps coming out. Stretch the skin. He's a little bit, right, come back a bit. Come back a bit, stomp. There we go, that's better. There we go. So we'll rake out. You can rake a little bit there at the top of the ear. We'll have less blending and scissoring to do when we do his ears, behind the ear, also the neck, you can rake there out. Again, you'll be able to blend the scissoring and clip line a lot nicer. So it's taking a big chunk. And that's why, that's where we start. All of this, I don't have to strip with thin fingers, so it's easier on my hands and arms. We'll come to the shoulder, to the bone, see what we can get out. Also, the elbow, hold your feathers out and rake out what you can with this. And we will rake until we have hair coming out with this rake. It's very quick. It's also great for other breeds. Anything double coated to the shed, um, even short hair dogs. Um, Sometimes you can rake some out, sort of short hair, I mean like Labradors, Rottweilers, that sort of, see we've got tons coming out, so we do this. Just this jacket, we're leaving the feathers. For now. Now, usually I'll just maintain him with this rake. Um, every so often, I'll rake him out and that was enough for him. Uh, but because I've not done a proper strip on him for a long, long, long time, uh, we now need to do a lot more actual hand stripping with fingers and tool, um, sort of stripping tools, not just raking. But raking is a very good start. We've got tons coming out. And it's quick and easy. We get the bulk out. So this is a good debulking. There we go. Right, we've got less and less coming. So now we can move on to another tool, which will be this fine tooth. Uh, stripping knife. Um, it's by Aronco, double A R O N C O um, brand. I believe it's an American brand, and you see, we uh, it takes out fine hairs. We want to stretch the skin, uh, stretch the skin, and place the knife. I'm not ripping it with a thumb, I'm just holding it and place it on about 45 degree angle and just sort of climb through and pull hair out. And it's really nicely pulling the fine fluff, which the other rake was not gripping now. We can try it on the elbow, not great there. So now we rake that out. See, we've got nice junk coming out. Careful on the top line so you, you don't damage your top coat there. Really, the more on the angle you place it, the more carefully you will take out just the dead fluff and not all these soft junk and not the actual top coat because he's got quite nice texture coat. And we'll just rake out like that. So we've got nice fluff coming out. Raking is easy on the hands, those that've got sore wrists. 
or arthritis in their hands, raking is much easier to do. So you can just gently, carefully rake out as much as you can before we go on to the hard bit of finger stripping. And that pulls out nicely. The more junk we remove, the flatter the coat will lay after drying and the nicer they will look. Yeah, so there we got that. And then you can also rake out afterwards with the Magna Carta, which is brilliant for short hair breeds, like Great Danes, Rich Bags, Dobermans, Boxers. But it also pulls out super fine fluff on the setters, especially Irish as well, works really well. Again, same way, I'm just raking, put the blade on a 45 degree angle, stretch the skin and drag it through slowly and it will get out. It's a bit awkward for me because it's too tall. How about you sit, Neo? How about sit, sit? Maybe that's better. Maybe you should be turned a little bit that way. No, come on. Stop. Sit that way. There you go. So we've got his back here, and you'll see we'll, we'll pull the skin. He's got quite a lot of loose skin there. I could fit another dog. And we just right, run the blade like so. And we are getting this soft fluff coming out, which we don't want in him. And then you'll start having a nicer shine of coat coming through um, by removing the dead coat. Mindful of a spine, if you've got slim dog that you can easily feel bones, uh, raking very carefully over the bony bits. Even on the sides. If I'll be quiet, you might be able to hear how it's nicely put in there. The hair out. Here we go, there's all the fluff. Right, and it's looking already a lot better. We got, you can see the little shine now. He's dirty, he's not been bathed for a couple of weeks. It feels grubby, but and now we're going to go back. I mean, the stone, I'll show you the stones quickly. Again, get a grippy finger against the stone and you just pluck. It does pluck well, but like I said, it just ends up digging into my hands and they are really quite sore from the hair splinters that I've got stuck in my hands. Um, so I don't uh, like it that much. You can also use a stone to stretch the skin and use it as a rake. So you just run the stone along like that and that will also pull hair out nicely. There we go. But I don't rake too much with a stone because I don't want to damage the nice top coat. So um, that was all the tools, and then the final job is done. Uh, I'm going to do now most of it with this my new favourite tool, uh, tool, which is a Showtech stripping stone with handle, double tipped one. Um, you might be able to find um, other brands or similar products. Um, don't ever brush your hair off the table with your hands because you'll get horrible hair splinters stuck. Always use a brush um, or dust pan and just scrap, uh, brush your hair off and any muck off the table. Never use your hands, please. Right, and now sit near. Sit that way, good boy. Right, no, you don't need to look out the window and you don't need to see yourself. He likes to see himself in camera, look at that. Right, and we're just gonna go stripping. The light is really awful here, so you don't see very well, but I'll just show you how I use it um, and where areas that we pluck out. Um, and then uh, we'll, I'll just finish him off, off the camera and then I will show you the final result um, once he's 
and bathed and dried nicely, all done and trimmed. He needs basically everything done. Um, I've taken some before pictures. Um, ignore his stacks because he was an awful. He was literally just to show the coat. So I have got pictures before in a good light where you can see just how much junk he had on him and what we're going to get. So um, when we strip in, you can also strip the side of the skull uh, and a little bit on the cheek. Some, some, especially males, can grow quite a lot of thick hair around there, sort of near the ears, up to the side of the skull. Um, and if you are stripping the head really tightly, you don't want to leave the bulk on the sides. Um, so you want to take that off as well, especially if they're a bit broader in the skull. He doesn't have a lot. And also you can pluck out the fuzzies on the muzzle um, and all of these black hairs. He doesn't grow them, but some do. Um, so we can strip a bit of the hair there on the side of his skull and he's plucking it super quick and super easy or just comes out. Little bit here where the ear joins the skull, we want to pull out there. Uh, it will be much nicer and easier once we bleed it in when we clip his ear, top third of his ear. So you can just take some of that. Anything that's brown, that's why I like to do stripping in a good light, usually sunlight, um, because in a sun, as long as it's not too hot, um, the sun will show you all the brown bits that should come out. So we can pluck a little bit up there. See, we've got loads out in just a few plucks. His coat is really ready to come out. And then the back of the neck. Again, it's coming super easy. Loads comes out easily. He, this mane, he, he, he grows this mane here around the base of his neck and that's a pain to strip out on because um, it's usually not a dead coat but we don't want a thick mane. It's difficult to get it but this grips uh, pulls it out really nicely. <sighs> I know Baba. And usually when you want to strip a lot on a dog, it's not fair to keep him sitting or standing for long. So we're going to lay him down now. Um, um, and I will show you. But before I lay him down, also the elbows are really easily stripped out. He just comes out like a dream. It's just uh, super quick and lovely. And we'll strip out the elbow, we'll strip out the sides. Usually you've got a nice, no, no not all the way that way, near, come back. Um, and do the nice side. We don't want to strip them in a straight line, uh, but we want to come down from loin down towards the elbow on the angle. Um, and have it bit you could see where the hair grows this is all junk that needs to come out and where his feathers start uh, so don't be scared getting rid of that and expose even the whole rib cage it's the dog's coat tells you where this line should be usually uh, and you can you can adjust it slightly um, if you've got too much dead feathers on the sides um, We'll see that later. And also the thigh, we want to come into the triangle on his thigh nicely and clear that. Clear out, clear around the base on the sides, either side of the base of the tail, sort of that comes towards the bottom. Uh, we want to get rid of that as well. Um, and um, there we go. And then we take some of the dead feathers out as well. And it's just coming out. Super quick, loads comes out. But we lay him down, because as you can see, they do fidget and it, it can take a while, obviously, half an hour standing still. It's a bit boring for them. Right, Neo, lay down. And this is how I lay them down. First, he just lays that way. 
he flopped his bum and then I will just flip him on his side, hold his elbow, flip him. There you go, nicely on the side. They can learn to chill out. You can do this um, after the walk, really long walk on a young dogs to get them used to stay still. Eventually they will learn um, to fall asleep. Um, you can give them a softer mat under them so they feel comfy or even they bed in or a bed bed. But I do like to have my dogs laying down and then uh, we help ourselves with the brush to see little clear lines because he's not standing still. But the final detail work we do after drying. So I'm just going to go in the safe areas where I know I can pluck away without ruining his shape. Oh, he's got a knotted armpit here. There we go. Right, and you can hold your, and you just strip away while they'll go to sleep, like that. And we'll just work a little bit on him. Hold him there. And he will chill out nicely here for about I reckon about half an hour and uh, that will be enough strip and he comes out nicely. Stop kicking my things off the table please. Come on. Hold your feathers out the way on his front leg. We don't want to take that out and then we know what we need to take out. And we just pluck away. Especially elbows are good to do it laying down because most dogs hate doing having their elbows stripped and they will really keep tucking their leg away. And although he might try to move his leg here, but he can't hide it from me and I can he, he uh, hold it in place much easier. He, can tr he tries to kick me with his back foot. He's like, mama, don't do this, but it doesn't hurt. Especially not now, and that's not even uncomfortable when it's literally this ready to come out back on him. Because he's been shedding so much, I can see constant hoovering, so I know. And then when you just go into a coat like that and you pick up a handful of hair easily, you can tell that they're ready to strip. Um, he is losing a bit of hair, as always. Uh, this is a little bit too much um, that is coming out. Even the hair I wouldn't want to strip out um, is coming out. But if the hair starts coming out, you might as well get it out because it will come out anyway. By getting it out quicker, you will encourage the new regrowth and the new hair can start growing in its place and hopefully it will be better and healthier. No, I don't kick me. You see, they don't like the elbows. I don't know why, they all do it. Nobody likes their elbows done. Um, steady, steady, steady. Good boy. And I give them a treat after in the end, when we're fully done, not during. Uh, because it just excites them and then they never know when we finish so he will, will be finished when I tell him we're finished that's when he will get his treat and he can get off the table uh, but until then um, during stripping I don't give him treats um, because he would just well he knows now he would be under the groom so he'd be off the table if I pulled the treat out now um, so he just has to learn patience and stay here. His elbows comes out easily, and loads comes out super quick. And I find this, it's got like a nice silicone handle, so uh, it feels nice to hold it. Stay. I'll fold the feathers out the way on his leg, and then I'll, I know the side of his front leg needs to come out. I know, good boy. Almost done it. Luckily, he doesn't have very hairy elbows. There's not a lot on him. Just stay. I'd 
lost my little blue tip. Where did that come in here? Where did we lose the tip? Stand my boy, good boy. You need to get a little bit of rock over that. Right, I said there. God, I didn't have my tip on there, that's why. Good boy. See, they can learn to enjoy it. Or maybe not enjoy it, maybe not love it, but at least to be good for you. No. And I can grip a lot more with this than just the fingers. So it goes a lot quicker. Stay. Stay, stay, stay. No. Don't give me your twitchy feet, darling. And I'm almost done with the shoulder and the elbow and the front leg. That's how quick it goes. Loads comes out easily. And you can really see the nice coat under it. And now I've sort of finished his front leg. So just brush out nice with the line there. And um, if they grow a bit of browns on the side of the feathers there, um, I can just uh, use this fine tooth as a rake to rake some of the dead coat out of the actual feathers. And you can do this on here, on the thigh fe feathers and also on their sides just the top layer of the few browns that he's got here. We just rake some of the brown junk out of the actual feather. And that was it. That was his front leg and shoulder pretty much stripped, shoulder, shoulder blade. We'll just move on and um, the other parts of him and um, we will be back. Um, then I'll attach some videos and pictures once he's uh, fully finished. Hi guys, so here's, we are back, we've stripped now both new sides, he had a bath and uh, he's been uh, dried now and you can see he's looking a lot better on the body there and uh, we just do the final kind of touch up now, he said no trimmings done yet so we have to ignore that but we see a few little bits where we can now after drying kind of just take a few more hairs out like here on the elbow took a fair amount of hair out of him um, I'll show you I've got a picture of a little pile of hair that we took we need to make a bit more definition here on the front leg um, and that's really easy with this um, show tech stone with a handle. Neo, come on. Just a few little detail touch-ups we'll do. Neo, don't you come out of there. Let's see if I can show you a bit more to the side. Here we go. He's got nice definition in the front leg there. We like a nice clear side. Um, and a nice straight line there. There we go. Here he is. So this was the side we were doing. 
and just gently take anything unwanted out. I've used the MD10 Silky Smooth Shampoo and Conditioner, which is available for shipping worldwide. It's my show um, shampoo and conditioner, and I love it because it doesn't make the coat um, soft. For a silky product, a lot of uh, products that um, are designed for silky smooth coats, um, to make them lay flat and straight will make them super soft, which we don't want on a setter, especially not on a jacket. And this retains a really nice texture on it and gives a lovely shine, but natural, not, not too much um, shine like some products, which literally look fake and you know your dog is full of products. Um, this just leaves a very natural look and a lovely texture. Um, I could probably keep doing this for a lot longer, but um, this will do for him. Once we do the trimmings, let's see the other side. Nia, turn, turn, come on, turn around. Good boy. Here we go, the other side, which I stripped. Uh, about a week ago and uh, we've got a nice this is the definition I was telling you about and how high you come up here depends on a dog's rib depends on the hair they grow um, you don't want to keep really ugly hair here but usually the line will naturally form where it goes and we just wanted not a ziggy zaggy line, which kind of shows in the camera a little bit. I can see we've got a few bits that need to come out here. Stay. He's never been a heavy coated dog, so not very difficult to work on him. Stay Neo. Here we go. Let's have a look. See if I can turn you guys a bit more. Oh, no, my stand too. not wanting to do that. So here we go. Let's check this front leg. I oh, know you don't like it. And we've got also a nice clear leg here. And uh, this front here. Also the shoulder. Let's see if we can come here. There we go. Right, now we're going to get into it. Now sit. 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 Come on. There you go. Let's put his ears back. Let's get a little band. We're just going to band his ears out of the way so we can touch up the full chest. I'm just banding his ear, uh, hair, not the actual ear behind there. Right, his neck's not been prepared. Styling wise, this front, I will show you in a separate video um, what we do here. Uh, we're just going to strip a little bit here on the sides. Because he has a really nice front, really good front angulation, um, and a nice filled in full chest as well, we don't have to hide anything here. So he doesn't need excessive hair. Around this point of shoulder, you can strip a little bit of hair, but not too much. Um, a lot we will have to scissor here because otherwise you'll pluck a bold patch. There's a bit of a mane here sticking out. Let's pluck that. Good boy. Basically, want to see, when I look at his full chest head on, on him I like to see the shoulder muscle from the front view. you. Um, don't like to leave too much hair unless we're hiding uh, sort of 
less than perfect front here, then you can leave more hair there. Right. And then this side. Good boy. I know, you sit. some of this. Probably best to show you we'll be taking pictures because I can adjust the light so that you can see the difference in what we've done. Right. Cool. So here we are. We can now trim, start trimming. And um, um, I will probably do that as a separate video just for the trimmings and clippings and I will do a separate video for the front section where um, I get a lot of question about what to do here in the front. So thanks for watching guys, hand stripping now, um, give it a go, let a stone like that, I find it very good for my little hands to work with it and stripping actually is quite enjoyable once you find the right tool that suits you. Thanks for watching. Bye.